Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the most popular specs for the pre-patch. I get a lot of questions all the time. What is looking like the strongest spec in the game? If you want to get into dungeons or into raids, especially if you're going to be pugging, you don't want to be picking a spec that's going to most likely get you kicked or not invited. But some of you maybe are just wondering what's looking really good, what's performing really well, what's maybe scaling out of control. And in this video, we'll be talking about some of the best DPS specs that are good right now for most PVE content. Unlike the beta, the pre-patch offers a lot of information and data from people that are currently playing, whether they're doing raids or even dungeons, and together was able to put up a list of the specs that are looking like they are doing the best in overall PvE. That means they gotta be doing pretty good on raids, but also gotta be good for dungeons as well. Now there's a couple of things to mention with this list. First of all, we are not level 60 and the game right now is balanced for level 50. Second, some specs have only one DPS class, but I will still talk about like Retribution Paladins, Windwalker Monks, Havoc Demon Hunters of how those specs individually are performing since that is your only viable DPS choice. Third, personally, I don't think any of the specs are bad, even the ones I don't mention in this video. Nothing would stop you from an organized group that's willing to go into Nailotha and you decide to go from a fire damage to an enhancement shaman. I don't think that class switch and spec switch is going to stop your guild all of a sudden from being able to progress. However, the human nature does exist and a lot of you guys get anxiety when it comes to trying to get into groups. So remember that in mind when watching this video. First class on this list is going to be Death Knights, and they have been one of the best classes that I wanted to play for the alt. It feels like Shadowlands expansion really does feel like a Death Knight expansion in some extent, and there's so much cool stuff you can do on a DK. Now, out of the two DPS specs options, Frost and Holy, I would like Frost to do well. However, they are going to be scaled better later in the expansion once you unlock a couple rank two versions of abilities. It looks like Unholy is taking this one home. Combination of Azeroth gear as well as a change to talents and a brand new mastery to increase the damage of your pets together with all the other Azerites and essences just makes Unholy Death Knight a no-brainer of a choice. It scales super hard right now and if you want to spec with some mad damage, Unholy would be a pretty easy choice. With Havoc Demon Hunters, there's not that much to choose. Havoc O is still going to be good. You bring a debuff that's going to be useful in dungeons and raids. However, this is a spec that heavily relied off of borrowed power ever since its inception back in Legion. So losing a lot of corruptions will get you to kind of reassess your spec and you might feel like you're weaker. Maybe you're doing something wrong, but you might have to think outside the box, try different talents, try different builds and just maximize your play style. But Demon Hunters looking like they took a bit of a hit compared to how well they did prior. But I don't think they're going to be terrible or unwanted because they bring a unique debuff that everybody is going to benefit from. When it comes to druids, it's a bit of a hard choice. You have Feral and you have Balanced Druid, and it looks like by the data that we have from the logs on both Mythic Plus as well as in raids, Balanced Druids are slightly ahead. First of all, you still have insane utility inside of groups. You have Innervate, which is going to allow your healer some free no mana cast ability usage for 10 seconds. But you also bring extra things that only Feral used to, like Stampeding Roar. You can now speed up your whole team party and just kind of head through dungeons and move around inside of raids. And you basically got the utility that of a Feral, giving, I guess, players less of a reason to bring a Feral Druid. Ferals also do scale much better at level 60 for Shadowlands, so they are missing some core features that they've been designed around. However, Boomies are looking pretty good so far with Azerites and they seem to be scaling just slightly better. So if you had to choose one of those two, I personally like the playstyle of a Feral. I think it's nice and unique, but Druid for balance, it seems a slightly better option right now as a DPS. And then we have Hunters. As much as I love survival and I'd rather play survival, Beast Mastery still gets mad value out of secondary stats. We are at the end of this expansion where we get the most amount of secondary stats you ever could, with Beast Mastery getting mad value from corruptions, increasing your mastery crit as well as haste. You're just going to get more of that in just smaller doses. And before all the stats are DR'd, which hasn't happened yet this expansion, Beast Mastery are looking to shred quite a bit. 
for mages, I would say Frost is probably the better choice. Technically, Arcane right now slams and raids, and it is my personal choice for just about everything I do. But Frost has a little bit of this balance between dungeons, where you can just rain blizzards and ice lances at your enemies, but also have decent competitive damage inside of raids. So if you wanted the best choice of a spec that's performing well in all aspects, so you go into a raid and go into dungeon, and you do relatively well instead of just being strong in one category, I would say the Frost Mage might be the safest choice. For monks, you only have one option, Windwalker, and the one thing I'll say about Windwalker is it still feels very fun to play. Its mastery hasn't changed at all, which is my favorite mastery of all masteries. I just like the playstyle of being able to go back and forth with abilities and making sure none of them repeat just creates an interesting and fun flow. They're still mobile, they still have pretty good defensives, hell, they gain more defensives. Windwalkers are not doing the greatest overall, but they're still decent. They do, like a Demon Hunter, bring a debuff. And I felt like Windwalkers didn't really suffer too much from losing corruption since they were scaling off of versatility. Most specs that scale off of versatility didn't really lose that much because they weren't really scaling that much in the first place as if your spec has to scale with verse, it's probably not going to be that crazy. So as Windwalker, you're not really seeing yourself lose a lot of power like a Demon Hunter, but you're not really watching yourself gain a mad amount of power. They're still very good in terms of AoE and the birds they can bring is quite high. The mobility and some of the things you can do with it is awesome. Then we have the Retribution Paladin, which I feel like is a bit of an underdog. They're actually quite good in terms of the damage they bring. I mean, Shadowlands update for Retribution Paladins just bring him even more damage. More ways to do damage, even bigger bursts with wings. So if you have fun playing around with wings, I feel like Paladin is going to be your great pick. I think more of them need to be invited into Mythic Pluses because they can really slap up some damage quite well. They really can clear through some trash bags and do some bursts and I personally enjoy them. I like the sustainability and the uh, survivability they bring for the group rather than for themselves. Like the off healing and hybrid potential they got is a lot of fun to me personally. But if you were just said raw damage numbers, I would say they're doing okay. They're not at the bottom of the list, they're not really at the top either. They're doing fairly decent. But I feel like there's more to the Paladin gameplay that I would enjoy. But if you look at raw damage numbers, they're not looking all that bad right now. So they're a decent choice to follow currently in the pre-patch. Then we have Priests and the only viable option you have is Shadow. And I gotta tell you, Shadow Priests for whatever reason are scaling out of control and even more. Prior to this, I didn't have a best in slot, best statted Shadow Priest. So my damage was abysmal, but with the changes that Blizzard has done to their mastery, variety of talents, and change to playstyle, my worst geared alt that I've actually tried to gear now does some of the best damage of all my alts, just with a small simple change. So all of a sudden Shadow Priest are doing insanely good. If you held a Shadow Priest off on the side and wasn't really sure if you were interested yourselves in playing a Shadow Priest, I think this is a spec you really should jump on. I think the amount of fun you would have with it is quite great, and they're looking to scale really, really hard right now at level 50 if you want to have some nifty fun with it. When it comes to rogues, I feel like there's almost no bad option, unless you're looking at Assassination, who is looking a little bit on the weaker side if you had to compare all three specs against one another. Every spec has good things they're in, Subtlety can do a lot of good single damage, and we got Outlaw that can do quite a good amount of cleave, and of course Assassination can do dots, spread, pressure, so all three specs are really good at just about everything. But if I have to pick one spec to just main for all PvE content, I probably would go with Outlaw. One, in Mythic Pluses, they're the king still. And two, in raids like Nailotha, it is still an AoE heavy raid. So you'll get a lot of benefit from the cleave fights rather than from a lot of the single target fights. Rogues can be specialized to do well in certain pieces of content. So they might be really, really good in, let's say, singling down a certain trash pack or a certain ad during a boss phase. But if you just wanted to hit everything with a brush stroke, I probably would just take Outlaw in the current phase. Then we have Warlock, and right now I would say Affliction is looking really nutty right now. Surprisingly, Affliction has flown to the top, and I think it's mostly going to come down to the other specs scaling a little bit better with some of the other legendaries. Demonology have to deal with AI, and while I like Demonology, I can see why the pet AI might get some people uninterested in terms of the fights and mechanics. Destruction was insanely good with its big Chaos Bolts and fast casts, and now that a lot of that power is gone, they just kind of took a lot of the wind out of them. But with the changes that Afflictions have gotten with some of the Azerites, they're scaling really well right now. 
They also don't have any AoE cap, so the more dots you can put on enemies, the more damage you'll do overall, which is probably why that makes them insanely good currently for M+. So if you wanted just a broad brush for Warlocks, I would say the best brush would be the Affliction. Finally, we have the Warrior, another class that I really want to alt, and if I didn't play my Rogue, I probably would main a Warrior going into the next expansion. Warriors right now is a really tough choice. Yeah, I would think this one is the first class where I actually have to give it a true 50-50 split. Fury is slightly ahead of arms when it comes to Mythic Plus and all things big, consistent AoE damage, which literally describes majority of Mythic Plus pulls unless you're doing a lot of bosses or workshop. Arms is insanely good at cleave, particularly at two target cleave, and it loves long execute phases where your executes is what look at like 80% of your damage at this point. So with these two specs being so similar to each other in terms of performance, but also so dominant in two separate fields, I would really pick the one that you like the most and call it. I wish I had a better uh, answer for this one, but it looks like both of these specs are just looking so close to one another on performance that it almost doesn't really make a difference which one you play. So pick the one you like the most in general. Again, this whole list is made for characters in pre-patch at level 50. We are not balanced by any measure for level 60, which is what the game is balanced towards. We also are using some of the barred powers that Blizzard didn't even think for our characters to use. The asteroids weren't even designed into thought process of how they should impact our gameplay. So certain classes with essences and asteroids are doing impeccably well right now. But once all the different squishes, the final ones, come in to the game on the release of Shadowlands, then we'll see how classes will truly play. And this is something for us all to remember going forward for level 60. Pre-patch is only going to be a blip in our time spent in Shadowlands. Only just the first however many weeks is it going to be until the actual release, so we will have to wait and see. But it is going to be a small opportunity for us to have some fun, play something that may be busted or something that's enjoyable, but then get ready for the real experience that comes later. So that is something for you guys to really remember. In fact, I don't hate any of the specs that are not on this list. I like Survival, I like me some Arcane Mage, Enhancement Shaman is kind of my bread and butter right now as an alt, and I would have played Outlaw even if it wasn't that great. And overall, I, I think that's what most of you guys should probably do, because, well, I think, unless you just like playing something that's super strong, I feel like if you're playing a spec that's really, really strong in numbers, but you don't like the playstyle, I think it's just a waste of your time rather than playing a spec that you might not be the top DPS out of everything, but you love the playstyle. I think there's just better time invested. So I'm going to leave you guys off with that little advice. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see all of you guys in another video.